Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Test Case Scenario. As always, I am your host, Jason Baum, and with me are Nikolai Avalokin and Marcus Merrill, our uh, panelists. Thanks for being on, Nikolai and Marcus. And you might have noticed we have another guest today. And today, uh, let me let me paint a picture for you first <laughs> with this with this bio that I have written because I think it's very important that we always have a, a little intro here for our guests. Our special guest is someone who has taken the world of science communication by storm. Hailing from Dubai, formerly of Berlin, Germany, Hashem Al Ghaili is not just a molecular biologist, but also a filmmaker, producer and a visionary in the realm of science and technology with over 33 million followers on his Facebook page, Science Nature, and videos that have been viewed over 20 billion times. Hashem is a force to be reckoned with. And we are extremely lucky to have you on our show today. Thank you for joining us, Hashem. Thank you so much for having me. And with that <laughs> intro, mm -hmm. uh, well, first, how's the weather in Dubai? I feel like you know, every conversation always it's, has to start. Uh, it's pretty hot, actually. Hot. But, but um, you know, we're, we're, I think, at the end of summer. It's mm -hmm. the first time that I moved here. I mean, it's just been like three months wow. since I moved. But they tell, they tell me that uh, winter here is the best because the, the temperature is now going down and very soon it will be just moderate and amazing. Well, that's good. So I can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> Well, especially coming from Berlin, where I, I think it's never warm. Long usually. winters. Yeah. You know, I mean, especially last year, it was the longest winter I've ever actually experienced in Germany. Mm. And I have lived there for over 10 years. Wow. Yeah. So now you like moved to the opposite. Well, Hashem, with your expertise, um, we figured today would be a great idea to throw out the topic of AI. So... Um, I think we could just throw it out with our first question with your extensive background in science and um, communication with those two things in mind, how do you perceive the rapid advancements of AI right now? Well, I mean, honestly, recently, I would say since the last year with the uh, launch of chat GPT, things have just been coming at an accelerated rate that we have never seen before. It's just incredible. Um, and it's advancing faster than we, we can catch up. Every day, new tools that we have never heard of, they just pop up out of nowhere. And the interesting thing is that a lot of them are based on models that are open source, which means people can come in and um, make their own modifications to these models and come up with even more tools. And this is this is like, you know, what we biologists call the tree of life, when it just keeps branching and branching and branching until, you know, you've got only one origin there. But all these tools that are open source and all these modifications that are happening are, are leading to incredible, at the same time, it can be scary uh, advancement. So... Uh, I'm curious to see where it's heading. What What's your favorite thing that you've done with one of these generative AI so far? Honestly, I'd say Mid Journey. I use it all the time to generate images, create mm -hmm. thumbnails for my videos, sometimes create concept art. I created uh, a short film with the help of AI. It's called The Last Stand. You can watch it mm -hmm. online. I don't know if you've seen it. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was making yeah. rounds. Uh, it was published also on... Uh, some somebody posted it on Twitter and Elon Musk responded to it. Yeah, it's about alien race visiting Earth, and at the same time, it's based on the on ongoing political conflicts on Earth. Yeah, and so I used AI to help with writing the script, to help with creating the concept art, and to also generate the voices. You know, uh, all the voices in that film are AI generated. The voice cloning technology with AI is now incredibly scary. It's just human-like. It just replicates exactly uh, the voice that you want at an instance. And I've seen that people are now starting to use it for extortion, for scamming, 
for a lot of things that we haven't predicted, but this is the thing. You put a technology out there and you let people be creative. There are those who will use it for good and those who will use it for bad. It's so interesting that you say that because I literally got a text this morning from a good friend of mine who is a producer for a, a very well-known show, has been on cable for a long time. Uh, and he texted me because they're very, they're extremely fearful of AI in the television yeah. industry. Obviously, they're on strike um, and many are blaming AI. Um, he asked, can in a live broadcast, can I overdub a voice? <laughs> Which wow. is, yeah. And I was like, not yet, at least that I know <laughs> of, but I'm sure it's on its way. But but the overdub in not live is very good now. And it's funny because I feel like Lucasfilms is always ahead of the game, right? And yeah. years ago, they put out Rogue One. And in Rogue One, I, I believe that's the first one, right? Where they started to um, generate the image of like Carrie Fisher oh, yeah. at in the 70s and, um, and, and Tarkin. Moth talk, Tarkin, the same, right. like, yeah. and, and like that guy's been passed away for years now, yeah. but they got his voice, they got her voice, and, yeah, and their honestly, image. <laughs> yeah, but if you compare, even though Rogue One mm -hmm. hasn't been a long time ago since it came out, I think it's been like compare, 10 years or so. Uh, but if you Eight. compare the tick, mm -hmm. how it has evolved since the last time, yeah. it's incredible. I think you've seen uh, The Mandalorian. Yes. Where they brought yeah, um, Luke. <laughs> Luke Skywalker. <laughs> yes. It's perfect. And they hired a guy from YouTube, you know, a guy who was uh, just making deep fakes on YouTube. They brought him in. They used his technique. They merged them with their own technique. And the result is phenomenal. Yes. It's just incredible. Right. I, yeah. I remember when I was like one time browsing um, Fiverr, okay, which is a freelancing website. And people were offering gigs for deep fake you know i'll create any deep fake mm -hmm. within 24 hours like what a time to be alive <laughs> of course now if you go to fiverr you won't find these uh, gigs anymore because they, they are cracking yeah. down on that but uh yeah. we come to a point where you just need to have a computer and you can I, just i was a video I, i've there. been a video and i've been editing videos since since high school and before that and i learned on analog set roll back five seconds <laughs> on the tape and go oh my gosh it just kills yeah. me how easy it is now <laughs> yeah i uh yeah. recently received uh an email i recently published a book yeah science fiction uh this is sorry for the free commercial in between no there. please yeah. go for it it's, yeah. it's, you're on here. <laughs> simulation <laughs> the great escape yeah it's science fiction novel anyways while we're still speaking about AI, somebody sent me an email. I mean, I'm first time author and saying, we are from the author's guild. We have this and this and that. Of course it was, I immediately realized that it's uh, an email generated by chat GPT because nobody would write an email that perfect. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so he's requesting that we would like to distribute your, your, your book. They created a legit website which looks like they are really authentic. And he even called me, say, hey, we are from LA and the number appears LA, yeah? <laughs> and uh, I wanted to see where it goes. So he said, we would like to print 2000 copies with our uh, uh, printing uh, company. You know, we have a partner and uh, you just have to pay for it. We will distribute it. We will uh, give it more reach and all of that. You have to pay the money to us, of course. And then we will sign deals with you uh, for Netflix and for uh, Paramount and all these. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, this is, <laughs> I mean, I understand that scammers try to find a way to make a living through this, but don't make the offer too good to be true. Huh? Yes. Because that's how we can spot it. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, I have seen that all these emails that are scams are now being generated with AI as well, which means anybody with really poor English can now write a perfect email and make you convinced. If you are oblivious, you will fall for it. Which is probably helping scammers because a lot of when you do the like phishing, tra phishing training or the scam training, right? You learn to check out and see bad grammar and misspelled things. And a lot of times that gives it away. But it's, it's funny true. that now maybe ChatGPT you, you know, is curing yeah, a little I red flag. I noticed that 
I noticed that this guy was using in the email a lot. Sir Hashim. Sir Hashim. I'm like, okay. This is too much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sir, sir, sir is like, I mean, from which village or I don't know from which, uh, yeah, you're trying to send this email, <laughs> but that's not how people communicate professionally. So well, um, there are oh gosh, signs this, that. Yeah. This opens up though, Hashim, so many different ways like that people can take this technology right to your point. Like they could go the, the good route and like use it for, um, I mean, audio, video, all these the scripts. and But even that has implications, right, on people. Um, and I want to kind of talk about the ethics behind some of this. And I don't want to get into a whole ethics course or anything here. Mm -hmm. But like, when you take the image of someone who has been passed away for years, and you are all of a sudden just generating their image and right. their voice for all to consume or, or something else. I mean, obviously the scams are not ethical, but something like that, which we could consider to be good use because right. It was entertaining and boy, it's cool to watch Luke Skywalker on my screen in a new yeah. show as if it was like 1977, but it's obviously not. So what are the, like, how, what yeah. do you all think about that? Well, it's interesting because um, there was news just last week that James Earl Jones has sort of signed away his vocal rights his in perpetuity. His mm -hmm. voice can forever be used by AI to be <laughs> Darth Vader. Peter Cushing did pro probably did not sign such an agreement before he died in 1993 or 94. No. So, also, so that's the thing. Yeah. Recently, Bruce Willis also signed up his yeah. face. Oh, did he AI. really? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, so when... When they do that, you sort of get it. Now you kind of want, you wish they would get in the way and you know let people uh, let fresh blood come in. But um, but at the same time, if they do it voluntarily, willingly, understanding all the implications, uh, hopefully signing their heirs to be beneficiaries of of this use and, and the royalties and stuff like that, that seems like that's fine. It's just like I fully expect Marilyn Monroe to star across Marlon Brando in a drama before the end of my time, which will be Oscar winning and breathtaking in its scope. And that that's where I'm like, yeah, it's their estate doing it. And their estate is still cashing in on grandpa, grandma. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. Marilyn Monroe didn't have kids, but, but I want to hear what I, mean. <laughs> I want to hear what Nikolai has to say too. <laughs> yeah. and, and then Hashem, but um, I, I want to say, did anybody see that black mirror episode, the first episode from the new six, season? Yeah. Yes. This is it. This is exactly yeah. it. It's exactly You're the it. same. Yeah. Except that yeah. in in the episode they were signing up their rights without knowing um, the right, ramifications. Right. They didn't know they were in the other reality. <laughs> yeah, right. right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I feel like it's it's super interesting to me. What's interesting is what kind of movies or creations will now be produced. As kind of as Marcus touched on, like you get Marilyn Monroe teaming up with other individuals from history with tom cruise yeah movie. yeah like that look like super realistic and it's like to some that may be really wonderful to see that kind of experience like for me i i've never seen marilyn monroe in a movie except some like black and white snapshots here and there or just some pictures of her you know so what would she be like in a movie i've heard so many great things about her you know i'd love to see her in a movie so but it's very unique do you think that's ethical? I mean, the thing is, there are actors who existed before this technology came, and you don't know. I mean, maybe they wouldn't approve of the script of that film. Yeah. They would say, you know, I would never have started yeah. in something like this. I don't like the script. I don't like the story. I don't like the dialogue. It's as simple as that. Now, those who are doing it willingly and signing their rights off to somebody else, they know because they exist in this time. They know the technology is here. And they know that it could be used for anything, basically. It could be a B film, even. Yeah. Uh, but they know. But those who have died already a long time ago, it's kind of tough. I would say this 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 has to be discussed with their descendants, probably. Yeah. Because in the end, it's the image of the family as well and the legacy mm -hmm. of uh, uh, whoever is involved. Yeah. I but wonder I if do they consulted the family. Yeah, they oh should. yeah, I'm pretty sure they do. Yeah. They have to. They have to. Otherwise, that would be a big be surprise to someday see you know all of a sudden your father who passed away 20 years ago is in a movie. Definitely, yeah. multiple legal 
actions will yeah. be commenced. Yeah. Trust me. The but I do envision a future where streaming services will use AI, you know, to help you create your own film right on the spot. You upload your picture. It it generates a three D model from this picture. The three D model will be used for deep fakes. Um, you upload uh, pictures of your friends as well, okay. And then you choose uh, co stars. Could be famous actors as well. Uh, you choose a synapses for the film, and you hit generate. Say so come back in one hour, two hours. The film is ready. Everybody will have a personalized film that's unique, okay. And uh, it cannot be replicated by other people. So then you and your friends are watching the film where all of you are starring in it. I don't want to see the president. Let's just pretend for all media that I consume that John Kennedy is the president huh. for, from here on out. I don't care that, who it actually is. Let's just make it that. <laughs> Sounds like disassociation. It, it, updates, uh, the, it updates all the films, right? Yeah, it right, updates yeah. all the films. with Every that. news clip I see, every copy I read, every speech mm -hmm. I hear, it's always John Kennedy forever. Actor and, swapping. And, and even more dynamic than that, because if you imagine now they get your viewer analytics and understand what you like and don't like, and all the content, that yeah. video content is generated for you to be the most glued to your channel. And you have unique content generated for Marcus Merrill for him to binge watch everything and only, and everyone else gets their own different flavor. You, you will content. never leave your TV after that. Yeah. Well, I mean, hopefully, do I'm we want to go down glasses. this route? Hold on, do we <laughs> want glasses, this? Glasses, 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 glasses. <laughs> does, yeah. does everybody want this? I don't know. Like, is this a direction we actually want to go? I feel like this so, is almost like when they clone the sheep, and everyone's like, "I am." You know what? Excited. Maybe let's not no, do that. I'm excited about this technology for one thing. So I can just upload my <laughs> book, and it will yeah. be turned into a series or films. Movie. Yeah, that think... would be. The ultimate game changing. Because so, first of all, it has to be turned into a screenplay, and AI would be able to do that. Then the screenplay will create the concept and everything, and pre production, all of that. That would be incredible. That would just I guess the, to, to answer your question, Jason, and, and, and I mean this sincerely because I don't actually know the answer. 30 years ago, 1990, would you have, if you had heard, I'm going to have a magic black rectangle in my pocket, and for the low price of $70 a month, I have access to all the world's information at a glance, as well as every single friend I ever want to contact within seconds. Do you want that? I think I would have said I didn't want that, and now here I am living in the universe of it. I will say um, many yes. parents who I talk to say the same thing with regards to their children <laughs> and giving mm -hmm. them a phone. Yeah. And thank goodness I didn't have access to one until I was like 18. Oh, and wow. Even then, that took a while. Oh, I'm older. I was, I was in my 30s. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. I, rem I remember we, I was in high school. I was like 16, 17. And we had one cell phone for the family uh, with a dial pad and then an antenna. And my yeah. dad would give me the cell phone and I'd go out with it and keep in contact with them using our family cell phone. How about how about this? The car phone. Do you remember the car phone? My mom or, had a car phone. Yeah, or those old school cell phones that you left in the car, but they turned it off, and it was only for emergencies, so no one could yeah. actually reach you, but you could call yeah. out. <laughs> Bag phone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So on live with Regis and Kelly, I remember uh, watching a clip just recently where Regis turns to Kelly, and they were supposed to debut the iPhone. And that was like a big deal. And he goes, who would want that? That's not going to yeah. be a thing. <laughs> it's like, we already have the iPad or whatever it was, the iPod. Why do we need, why do we need a phone too? I have a phone. I said the same thing when the watch came out. <laughs> Look at me now. Every day. Can't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how do you think this is going to impact your field in terms of molecular biology. We're talking about content creation, influencing right. movies and entertainment um, games. That's where it always starts, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, AI is very, very vital for molecular biology and biotechnology. Uh, when you design a drug, a process that takes tens of years, you need to make sure that the structure of the drug is perfect 
or the target process in the body, okay? And uh, one of the things that they do that traditionally is by designing multiple proteins and multiple, you know, molecules. And unfortunately, you know, when, when, when molecules interact with each other, they undergo several changes in their structure. And you can't tell what kind of change is going to happen unless you conduct an experiment in the lab. And experiments can be very costly. It takes a lot of yeah, effort and time and resources. So now what they do is they use AI to predict what kind of change that will happen with almost 99% accuracy. Meta has its own uh, tool for that, which can predict, I think, I don't know how many thousands of proteins at once. You know, they can predict protein folding. And Google, DeepMind also can do that. So um, these companies have created incredible tools that can speed up the process and they can probably even take us to what's called personalized medicine, which means that every person will have their own custom-made drug because our bodies react differently. I mean, right now we have this way of having a, a universal drug that we say, you know what, it works for everybody. But we all know there are underlying conditions that we have in biology and genetics. So in the future, it's going to be personalized and AI is going to speed this up. Yeah, and make watch it those commercials. Well. You watch a you watch a drug commercial and you're like, it's like two seconds about how great it is, and then 15 minutes about all the problems that it's going to cause in your uh, life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's more yes, of a problem. I, I think that science. will not be. Yeah, I I think that will be minimized with with yeah. the help of AI. I mean, that'd be huge. Also, um, one of the technologies that I'm uh, excited about is um, uh, genetic sequencing. You know, genome sequencing. Uh, the first human genome project which started in 1990 and lasted for 13 years ended in 2003 or something to sequence one genome and with the cost of 2.5 billion can now be done with the cost of 1000 within 24 hours with a tech that is just the size of a usb you can plug it in your laptop it's incredible it's incredible how how far we have progressed with these technologies and I'm excited to see AI being integrated into all of these. Forgive well, this question. I'm not a molecular biologist, but does this mean we're going to live forever? Forever? But like, I feel like what you're saying is we're good. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, we're all uh, we're all in the age where we will see the first human to to probably go past 200 years. Wow. Yeah, definitely in our lifetime. Um. But forever is a relative term. Are you saying that permanently until, I don't know, uh, the end of days I would want that? Well, no, but, but a longer, a longer lifetime. I mean, when you can basically Definitely. create we, we, customized yeah. drugs for all your problems, I mean, is this going to be the cure for cancer? I mean, that's it, the thing that's on everybody's drugs. mind. Customized drugs alone are not enough because yeah, there's a the degradation of the body too. No, yeah. like the bones and your muscles. And Have your you heard? And it's like, how do you replace all of that? Yeah. Have you heard about this millionaire? I don't know, millionaire or billionaire, but you know, it's pretty much the same. But so he is taking blood from his son. Okay. Oh, it's Peter Thiel, right? I, yes, oh, yeah, I have I seen this. That. And so to prolong his life, and uh, I was seeing a picture before and after, there is definitely a noticeable difference. Uh, the process, when they do it with animals, it's called parabiosis. Basically, they take when they take two mice, and so this is the, this is something they did. By the way, they took two mice, old and young. They put them side by side, and they connected their veins, their blood, and it becomes one circulatory system. Okay, so now the young is giving the old younger blood. Okay, and then you basically, after some time, all the blood in the old one becomes young because the blood refreshes itself and. You know, all red blood cells die, uh, components are refreshed all the time, and uh, it's incredible rejuvenation. Uh, the, the the old one was starting to show signs of de-aging. So this is this is the principle that they are using here, is that he's what? taking blood from his son, but yeah. What happens to the young one? 
Uh, we'll stay. We'll stay. Ages. Because it's, uh, nothing. He doesn't. I don't no, think no, it's a transplant. Happen. He's not getting old. He's not like he's... sucking the life force <laughs> out of his son. No, no, no. not at all. Because uh, okay. when you donate like, a blood, you yeah. know, your blood is replaced right. every few days. So that's basically what happens. Wow. So yeah. the young one stays young. It's not like the vampire films where uh, you see this. <laughs> that's life what I'm force picturing in my body. head. Vampire mice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's not how it goes. But it's, yeah, it's, you it's know, incredible. Yeah. You know what I heard through all of this, Hashem, you talking about the customized medicine per person is I hear and a lot of things that we talk about is it sounds like the world is going to be a place where could be a place where everything is customized for every individual. Your whole experience is customized to you thanks to AI. You got customized drugs, customized videos, customized music. Maybe even how you view people is, you know, AI, AI uh, augmented and you got augmented reality and basically everyone will just be living in their own world. You know, I don't know just you, for them. Or, I think it's a, it's a great concept. Have you seen that episode in Black Mirror also where um, I think they put a brain implant? It's always just to start with a brain implant here. Uh, <laughs> and so uh, what happens is that you can use an iPad then to uh, blur the image of somebody you don't want to see. It's like blocking. Imagine in the future where AI is like, you know, you want to see your partner as somebody. <laughs> huh? And then you just <laughs> use the deep fake real time generation or you want to see, um, you know, you, you want to see some famous people as if they are part of your life. And, you know, you can customize that. You can have the same president that you always want. You can put Barack Obama on top of Marcus right now. <laughs> I endorse. No, but but I'm talking about <laughs> real life. You know, like real life yeah. when you're talking to them and you see them in front of you. Real and you time, never tell them who they, who they actually look like to you. Uh, it's best not to tell them because that would be uh, insulting, <laughs> I think. Yeah. Some of them. So. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in the community field and this all sounds terrifying to me because to me it sounds like the end of community. It sounds like we are no longer going to have communities. We will have our own insular, very small world. We're basically going to take the world and make it smaller. Mm. If everything is customized to you and how you want it, uh -huh. then where is your diversity? Where is your, you know, it just becomes the society. Yeah. It, I mean, I live in New York City. I can't imagine like blurring people <laughs> there are people i guess i who i would like to blur but like <laughs> it, but i don't and that's my reality and that's how we interact and I, I feel like that's what makes us kind of unique is that there is so much diversity out there did you see that do you remember that um or we could be the uh, the opposite do you do you remember that film wally yeah uh, where all of them are now in a station they just yeah. plugged in into their virtual reality and they're just doing nothing just living there Huh? Yep, <laughs> we'll become the board. Or, or that film, Surrogate. I don't know if you've seen Surrogate, where uh, all of them are connected to avatars that live outside, but they're just plugged That's kind of like seat. Ready Player One and all those other things. Yeah. You know, that's... yeah. Well, I think we're approaching that. I think we're there, approaching there that. is one um, show that I want to ask you about because this you're kind of on this, like we're sharing shows, obviously you're a filmmaker, but also like um, I... I I'm trying to remember the name of it, uh, but basically the premise is um, it's a Prime, uh, an Amazon Prime show, uh, and oh it's yeah, I the... think I've seen they just canceled it recently. Yeah. I, is the one uh, where which happens in the UK where they put uh... no, well, no, uh, I don't know if it's in the UK. I actually think it's the US. No, this one is where after you pass, you have the option of being, oh, upload. It's called upload. Uh, upload. And you have the option to upload yourself before you die. You can upload your conscious self to like the cloud, which of course this particular space is owned. So there are a bunch of businesses that have afterlife places where you can go and put yourself. And so, and like, Microsoft you could put yourself in, like, it's a server. Shady Acres, or you could put yourself in, like, the, the you know, rundown area where you don't have a lot of money, or you can, and it's a really interesting concept, and I'm like, 
this of all of those sci-fi ones almost feels like the most realistic mm. because I feel like if they could capture whatever that self is, whatever that piece of the brain is, and then with AI, now you almost can do it. Yeah. And that's how they do it. They generate. I mean, like, they are working on it. It's called the uh, of they are. human brain connectum project trying to decode the source of consciousness where memories go create a digital version of the person but the question is is it gonna be you or is it really just a copy of you oh i it's really a copy. it's gonna this guy has gotta be yeah it's not gonna be yeah. you you're dead you're dead that's it mm. um but your but, you surviving know, you, family members can yeah. strap on a VR headset and talk to you. Here's what I think. You know, we all have left our fingerprints on social media. In the future, they're just going to gather the data from there and create an individual avatar, upload it to the cloud. It will be just like you based on your interest, your posts online and all of that. Uh, but again, it's a copy. It's not Sorry. you. Sci-fi always seems to catch, like real life always seems to catch up to sci-fi at some point. Yeah. And there was, um, I, I don't remember the movie, but uh, where they, oh no, this was another Black Mirror episode. Black Mirror is so good. My gosh, they're so on it. <laughs> um, they, they, the person passed away and they took the text messages and they basically created uh, this like, Inter like person that would interact with them because they created this body and basically yeah. had this the the text messages and all that fill the space the void that then became that person again because they had all their it was basically a big llm right uh in a body yeah. um and i feel like today we could probably do that we, we could, could probably not the body part but yeah. we could get everything else yeah, yeah. there's also an episode in uh uh, what was it? What was the name of the show? Seth MacFarlane. The uh, uh, the Orville. Uh, the Orville. The Orville. Yeah. So the Orville, and there was an episode where they found an old phone. Okay. And so the phone belonged to somebody who was sending text messages. Had some photos in it, and a lot of stuff. And they recreated that person and put that person in the holographic display room. Yeah, the holodeck and. One person fell in love with that person, you know. It's like in the movie mm -hmm. Her. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I I don't know if you've seen this girl from Twitter who made seventy thousand USD in one week after creating a digital version of herself, and people were texting her on WhatsApp or something. Uh, I heard about that. Yeah, I think it was I don't know three dollars per minute or something. It's crazy. Wow. It's crazy. I saw I saw there was a, like an Instagram. Yeah, we saw we saw this at the Polish conference. Um, there was an Instagram model that was fully AI generated, based on I don't even know I don't even know who, but she has like millions of followers. And oh yeah, uh, last week it was announced that um, I think Universal licensed. Uh, license the voice of an AI generated character that has millions of followers online. Yeah. And who's the winner? Whoever created that character. So this is a great business model. And I think people who are resisting AI right now will fall behind. So we need to embrace it. We need to integrate it into our businesses, into our lives, because you can't resist. Yeah. It, it let me ask a question to Marcus and, and Nikolai, specifically from a testing perspective. Does this scare you a bit? Because is this a, a question of like, because the integrity of these pieces, the quality of these things that are coming out, are, do, are people caring less about quality with some of these things coming out? Or are they just so good? Oh, he's asking me at the end of the episode, not the beginning. I don't know if we have enough time. I, yeah, I think sorry. that people, I think that people are forgiving of some glitches and flaws in the images and, and uh, soundtracks right now. Like, I feel like I can pretty much always spot deep fakes and stuff like that. We're still in early days. So I think that right now people are being very forgiving of, of that kind of quality in a way that they won't be somewhat soon, but I'm also always cognizant as a as a lifetime qa person that um 
like even as good as the promise of things like AirPods are, if you've seen, I've had to recharge mine several times a day. Like this stuff is glitchy and it doesn't work and batteries are don't, don't hold their power and software breaks all the time. And, uh, you know, United Airlines had a massive glitch a week ago, Southwest Airlines three months ago, the FAA had to shut down flights for a, few, a little while. Like software glitches are only growing in complexity and their impact and their blast radius. Mm-hmm. Um, and at the same time, uh, we are demanding more and more of software because, you know, everyone listening to this podcast right now has probably been pissed off in the last 24 hours about some app on their phone. Like we're, we're living with it, but the quality is not going to a hundred percent and we all know it for now for now. But like the, our aspirations always exceed the reality of, of the implementation. All right. And, and I, I don't know that our what we want is ever going to match what is available with 100 percent quality right. at the time. You know, I I was um, I was reading someone asked a question on Reddit, uh, saying, "All right, now that AI is dominating, would you read books written by AI?" Uh, the comments had mixed reactions, but some people were like. Look, if the story is great, it doesn't matter who wrote it, yeah. Uh, or if, um, yeah, if they take care of all the elements that make a good story, then why not? Hmm. Now, right now, of course, it's really not even close. Yeah, there are still a lot of gaps that need to be filled, but it doesn't mean it's not gonna get there. It will get there. It will reach near perfection as much as a human does. Honestly, when I look at what Mid Journey can create right now, incredible images that sometimes are in- very difficult to accomplish by no amount of artistry you have. And no matter how much people resist it, it's just amazing. So people will embrace it, people will accept it, and it will reach a stage of near perfection and it will be indistinguishable from anything we create. I, I think I see your point of view, Marcus, in that, to me, I think what you're trying to say was our capacity to generate software that we use and our ability to test that software, they're not growing at the same rates. Our capacity to generate software is growing drastically faster than our ability to make sure that the software is quality. And so there's more and more need for quality assurance, and there are more and more bugs over time in the world. And an interesting thought to me is, yeah, right now, some of these bu- some of these bugs are very catastrophic. A lot of times they just affect a company, uh, maybe an industry, AWS goes down, n- numerous companies are affected money. But what happens when software is responsible for dropping a Boeing 747 and killing all the passengers in there? Oh, okay. What happens when two airplanes collide or something of that kind of catastrophic disaster. And now software is to blame. And the engineers that wrote that software are to blame. That That is part is scary to me. I mean, we're, we're absolutely heading towards requiring the AI to help to test the AI. I mean, we have to have, we have to have that AI testing to keep AI. up. That's right. We're, we're going to have to. I'm already doing it. I have chat GPT open all the time. And it's helping me test software that I'm that I'm helping to create. So it's already we're already getting there. When, when yeah. people tell you that we're going to get to a point where we don't need software developers because AI is now making it easier to write a code, do you think we're going to get there soon? How soon? Um, I I think that personally, I, I'd love to hear Nikolai's take, but I'll, I'll keep this real quick. I think that we're heading to the point where. There will always need to be, I think we're always going to need a human hand on the rudder, but I think that we're going to need fewer of them. I think that's, I'm I'm not sure I'm convinced that we're going to replace the human within, uh, I'm going to say 20 years, but I really feel like I want to say 10. Um, But in in some cases, they can be replaced right now, and we're kind of seeing it all over the place. So what next then? (laughs) Yeah, but yeah, Nikolai, please. I'm sorry, yeah, I'm just I, taking over. I, I have a lot of questions because the topic is yeah. uh, is very interesting. Oh, it's great. It's great. I wish we had more time and, and we'll yeah. probably have to invite you back. <laughs> mm-hmm. Anytime. 
Yeah, Marcus, I was going to say, I I, I think I agree with you. I see now instead of engineering teams working together to achieve a goal, I see one engineer managing a team of bots to achieve that same goal more efficiently, faster, with higher quality. I mean, just as an example, I've used chat GPT three or 3.5, the, the old one for the last week, I think I've spent five hours on a project and I've gotten farther along than I would have in the past running a team of four or five people Wow! just on a little Amazing. side project. Yeah. Just and it's just part. me with me with a, with a, a three-year-old generative model that doesn't even have the most updated access to documentation. It's not the new one. Yeah. Yeah. But again, I always ask myself, what's next when all of these people have no jobs to do? What are they going to do with their lives? Mm -hmm. How are they going to make income? Okay. Yeah. And yeah. It's, they, it's... They, will, they will shovel coal to power the AI. <laughs> They're going to become prompt engineers. <laughs> <laughs> well, prompt engineers. Yeah, I mean, it's true. The new jobs are always created. When new jobs. Go obsolete. Yeah, it's, yeah. I, I hope I hope you're right. I, I it, it it really brings up questions of uh, UBI universal basic yeah. income and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, I'm not yeah. not ready to top top tackle that today, but yeah, major major impacts and not just on this industry, on a whole bunch of industries. Uh, Hashem, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you, Nikolai. And thank you for listening. This was an awesome episode. Uh, we are 100% going to have to have uh, Hashem back and we are going to get into some more ethics and, and science and technology because this stuff is fascinating. Um, and please, we would love to hear from you uh, and your take community dash hub at saucelabs.com. Send us an email. I am Jason Baum, and this is Test Case Scenario. We'll see you next time. Take care. Mm -hmm.